Hi, my name is Marin, and I'm going to be leading you through our art project today. You can't see me, but you can see my hands. We're going to be creating our own unique geodes using watercolor, paint, and salt. So these are a few examples of sort of what we'll be doing. But before we dive into that, let's talk a little bit more about Georgia O'Keeffe and her artwork. You just learned that she's a very well-known and well-respected American painter from the 20th century. She loved to paint things from nature. She pretty much didn't uh, paint portraits or people or animals uh, at all, but she did love to paint things like flowers. This is one of her well-known uh, flower paintings, and they often were huge, taking up the whole canvas and sometimes more of a detailed uh, look. A look close up. This is actually an animal skull, so I guess she did paint skulls uh, of animals, but just not the animals themselves. And this is actually a landscape. She did do quite a few landscapes as well, and this piece is in watercolor. And that's some more of the work I want to look at. Later in her life, she primarily worked with oil painting, and that's what she's most known for. But there was a period of a few years early in her career where she used watercolor pretty much exclusively, and she produced a ton of work over the course of two or three years, about 114 or so paintings, all in watercolor, and it was a very transformative time in her uh, painting career and it really helped her develop her style and understand who she was as a painter. So it's, it is an important time in her painting career to look at. This piece is a landscape called Pink and Green Mountains. This is another um, kind of landscape called Sunrise and Little Clouds. So it's a little more abstract but you can see through the colors and some of these shapes in the sky you get you get the sense of the sunrise and the clouds so now let's look at this abstract piece called evening star it is a watercolor on paper as well i want us to pay close attention to each of these color areas and notice how there's very clear boundaries between each section of color. This blue and green does blend together down here, but even it is a very distinctive shape. And each shape has very clean and clear edges. What this tells me is that when she was painting with the watercolors, her paper was dry because when you paint watercolor on dry paper, you're able to produce those clean, sharp edges. Uh, it, it, it gives you that um, precise boundary or border with the paint. In contrast, this piece is called Sunrise. And with the exception of this little horizon line that we have running here, kind of around the edge of the sun, the area up here and the area down here, I'm guessing were wet because the paints are bleeding into each other. The red, the pink, and then the pink into this area, which was probably just wet and then more red. They're all, um, they're all blending and bleeding and they have very soft edges in contrast to what we saw with the other piece because when you paint watercolor onto wet paper or wet areas of uh, the of a piece, you have that blending and that soft edge that is created. So now that we've looked a little bit at the difference, let's practice some wet on wet and some wet on dry before we dive into our project. And you should have a small piece of watercolor paper, your watercolor paint pan, a cup with water, um, and a flat brush like this, and a round brush. Your brushes might not look exactly like mine, but 
those are the two type you should have. And you're going to start by just grabbing some of the water on your flat brush and putting some of the water onto one side of your paper. I don't want you to get the whole thing wet. We're just going to put some water down on part of it. And I know on the video it's a little hard to see um, the wet area because water is clear, but hopefully you get a little bit of glare from that. Now I'm going to grab my round brush and I'm going to load it with paint. You can pick whatever color you like. I am picking purple. So I'm going to get a bit of paint on there and I'm going to go to my dry side and I'm just going to paint a single line down the dry side of my paper. It's a very intense purple. And now I'm going to get uh, a little more paint and I'm going to do the same thing on the wet side of my paper. Okay. Ooh. Oh, I got a lot of water pooling down at that end. <laughs> so you can see instantly <laughs> there's quite a difference. The area that is wet, the purple is immediately spreading out and bleeding into the other wet areas, whereas my line on the dry side is clean and sharp and staying put. So big difference <laughs> in what's happening with the paint. I'm going to grab my round brush again and I'm going to grab another color. This time I'm going to take some blue. And I'm going to practice doing some dabs like this. And when we paint our geodes, we're going to be doing dabbing just like this. Just little dabs of paint. And you can see the blue, you know, it instantly, just like the purple, is spreading out all over the place. It does look pretty cool, I think. I'm going to take some more of that blue and I'm just going to go right over the top of my dry line, which it actually, the paint is pretty dry already. Maybe I'll go down here. It looks a little more dry. So again, this side of the paper is dry. So my blue line staying put. Uh, and even though I've gone over the top of my purple, the purple was dry. So that part of the blue is also staying put. But just because I painted this line doesn't mean it has to be like that forever because that's the magic with watercolor is you can always you can always move it around. You could always change it just by adding some water. And so I'm going to grab my flat brush again and I'm going to start pulling some of this purple pigment, purple watercolor, away from the line. And I'm trying to do a good job of, I got a lot of water going there, of staying away from this edge. I just want to pull it to one side. I'm going to try and keep my nice crisp line, but I can use some of the purple pigment here to spread out and change, change the look of the line. Oh, and I grabbed some of that. I touched the blue. So now the blue wants to bleed into this area. So they'll kind of mix together. But notice, since I'm staying on the one side, I'm trying to stay away from this edge. Uh, the edge still is nice uh, and crisp because the paper was dry when I initially put this down. So I still have this line here that looks that looks good. And same with the blue. If I stay away from the bottom of that blue area that I put on. But anywhere where I'm adding more of the water, and I haven't added any more paint. I'm just using water. Any of that uh, is blending and bleeding all over. All right. So that's a little bit of practice of some of the techniques that we're going to use in a moment for our geodes. 
Well, you probably thought we were about to just dive into more painting, but I quickly thought we should talk about geodes and maybe take a look at some and see what exactly they are. Um, I have a few in my hand. These are small Oco agate geodes and they are from Brazil. And there should be a few of these with the supplies for this project, so you could take a look up close if you wanted. Uh, but geodes are just rocks. They're plain looking on the outside, and this is the outside. All of these have been cut open so that you can see the inside. But they're just rocks. Um, they're created in the hollow areas of soil, so such as an area where an animal burrows or where tree roots push into the ground. They can also be formed in the bubbles in volcanic rock. And over time, dissolved minerals seep into the hollow areas and harden into an outer shell. That's this, creating the geode. But the minerals in here continue to form on the inside walls of the shell, growing towards the center. That's what all this crystally uh, pretty stuff <laughs> is. Um, the most common geodes are quartz, but amethyst, which is a purple kind, is also uh, a common as well. And it takes millions of years for this space to be filled in, and sometimes it's not completely filled in. You can see this is a hollow area. I also have some photos of some really beautiful, colorful geodes, because they can be all sorts of colors. Um, these beautiful, colorful geodes, though, are a little beyond <laughs> the art docent budget. Um, this is one of the amethyst geodes, and it's this intense purple crystal area in the center. That's actually one of my favorites. And this is kind of a, a very colorful agate geode as are these, which have some blue, and this one actually has kind of an orangey red, but you can see those crystals towards the center. And every geode is unique. Uh, this is a quartz geode, so it's a little darker, um, kind of browns and different, more earthy tones, and then some agate slice geodes in these photos from Brazil. Okay, so now let's go ahead and dive into our geode painting. I'm going to sort of use this amethyst geode as my inspiration in terms of color and composition with that dark purple center. You, of course, could use different colors for yours. Okay, so we need our larger sheet of watercolor paper, a pencil, your cup with your flat and round brush, a watercolor paint pan, uh, a little bit of salt, and a paper towel, just a small piece in case we need to deal with a little bit of puddling with the water. So I'm gonna start with my pencil and I'm just gonna create kind of an irregular uh, shape for the edge of my geode. Uh, geodes, rocks, are not perfectly round. Uh, and I'm gonna try and fill my hole or a good portion of my paper, uh, just like George O'Keefe, I'm gonna do this geode large, even though we've been looking at small ones. And I'm just kind of making Kind of that irregular faint line. I don't want it to be very dark, but it'll help me figure out my edge as I start painting. And so now I'm going to take my round brush and I'm just going to get some brown paint on it. And I'm going to start going around the edge that I created with the pencil just as a guide. And because my paper is dry, you can see it's creating a nice sharp edge for me. This will be the outer edge of our geode. All right, so that's all I need to do with that right now. 
I'm gonna take my flat brush and I just want it to be wet. I'm not gonna add any paint at the moment. And I'm gonna start working on the inside of my geode and I'm just adding water around the inside edge. And you can see as I touch that brown line that I've created, that water is going to start bleeding or the paint is gonna start bleeding into my wet area. And I'm gonna create um, a wet area on my paper that is probably an inch to two inches away from that edge. I don't wanna go all the way to the center. I wanna leave a dry space in the center of my geode to work with later. I realize it's probably a little hard on the video to see exactly where the water is because it is clear, but hopefully you can see a little bit of the shine, the reflection of the water. And I kind of like how that brown is bleeding in. It's creating kind of that natural, natural organic sort of edge. But I'm being careful to not go beyond the outer edge because I want to keep that crisp line there. I think I'm going to make it a little, a little wider. And I'm just using plain water for this. I'm not adding any additional paint yet. I'm just letting the brown kind of bleed into that water area. And I think that's about good. So now I'm gonna put my flat brush down again and I'm gonna grab my round brush and now I'm going to start adding some of my main paint color, which for me is purple, because I'm using that amethyst geode as my inspiration. But if you uh, want to do a different color, that's fine. I would recommend keeping it with the cool colors uh, as opposed to some of the warmer tones like yellow and orange. But, you know, again, it's up to you. So I'm going to take my purple and I'm going to start going around this edge of the wet area. So just, I just want to go just on the in that inside, that edge of the water wet area of my paper that I just created. Just very lightly. You can see the purple is starting to bleed, which is what I want it to do. And I'm going to continue to kind of dab in some purple a little bit. I don't want this area to become too dark because I want my, my center of my geode to have the most concentrated color and we're gonna get to that soon. So if I feel like any of these little dabs that I'm adding are too dark, I can just go with some plain water and kind of dilute it a little bit. And I'm just, I just am kind of letting the water and the paint do the work. I'm just trying to spread it out a little. I'm not doing anything fancy. I'm just kind of dabbing a little bit here and there with my round brush. But I like how it's spreading out. And I can see I'm getting a little puddling right there. And so if you're, if you're getting some of that and you don't like it, what you can do is just take your paper towel, kind of mop it up a little bit. I do still want the paper to be wet, so I'm going to try and add back a little bit of the purple. Because when I mop up that water, it is going to take the paint, the pigment away too. So I'm going to kind of do that to correct it. And I'm feeling pretty good. Now I can, I don't have to keep it all purple. I could add a little bit of blue here and there, just a little bit for a little color variation. Just for fun, might, might create a different kind of purpley tone for me.
I'm feeling pretty good about the colors there so far. What I might actually do is just a few spots on the edge. I might go add a little bit of brown, just, just a little more brown coming away from the edge. And you can do that too if you want to. I don't want it to be super dark, so I'm just kind of diluted a little bit with water. Just, just doing a lot of dabbing for this to kind of create that organic look that a geode might have. But I'm, I'm liking how that's looking. And so now while this area is still wet, I'm gonna go ahead and add some salt. Now, if you do have any areas that are puddling a lot, I would recommend just very lightly trying to get up some of that excess water because the, the salt will do better if it's not like a complete puddle. So I'm gonna start adding just a little bit of my salt to the edge and you can see it's starting to react. The salt is really gonna help give us that kind of crystal look. And we're gonna try and keep it away from the center because we still need to work on that spot. And if you feel like your paper actually has become too dry, you can always add a little more water to make sure that your salt will react. So I want to make sure I have a little salt um, for the center as well. Okay, I think that's probably pretty good. Okay, so if you did get any salt in the center, which I got a little bit too, just brush it away like this. That's not a big deal. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my round brush and I'm gonna load up on my main color again. And what I wanna do is create a nice uh, dark section in the center. I'm not gonna go all the way up to my wet line. I'm gonna leave a little bit of a white gap there. And I'm just gonna kinda create an irregular line using that purple. Just like that, I can spread it out a little if I need to. Okay, so now I'm once again gonna take my flat brush, just with some water, and I'm gonna start pulling some of that purple into the center. You can see I'm just just gently taking my flat brush and pulling some of that purple on my edge into the center. If I need more water, I can get it. I want to try and stay away from going over the edge of the purple, I'm gonna try and stay with inside the squiggly line and not go over. If I do, it's not a huge deal, but that's just what I'm attempting to do. I'm not adding any more purple paint yet. I'm just pulling some of this color into the center. And that seems pretty good. And again, if your paper's buckling a little bit, that's normal. Uh, sometimes when you add a lot of water to watercolor paper, it might bend and buckle and that's okay. You can always use that paper towel to just pick it up a little bit. So that seems pretty good. Now what I'm gonna do is take my round brush and add some intense purple spots, just like this. And I'm gonna just keep dabbing until I get 
the look, the concentration of the purple that I want. Again, nothing, nothing fancy here, just, just dabbing to add some of that really dark, intense color to the center of my geode. And I can mix it up again. I can add, if I want to add a little bit of the blue, I can do that. You don't have to, you can keep it straight purple. I'm going to add a little just to mix in a little color variation. I'm not going to go all the way to the edge of my squiggly line. I think I'm going to kind of leave a little, little space there. And I'm getting a little bit of puddling in the center. I can see that, so again, I'm just gonna take my paper towel, might dab it a little bit, and then I can just go back, maybe with a brush that isn't so wet, but has just a little more of the paint. Okay, I think I'm feeling pretty good about that. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a little more salt to that center while it's still wet as well. And you can see the outside has already really started reacting and uh, already looks nice and uh, like crystals since it's been reacting with the salt. So now I'm just gonna try and do that to the center area. Okay, I think that's probably good. Um, so now of course I need to wait till this is fully dry before I can uh, brush off the excess salt. So you'll probably need to wait till tomorrow before you can um, really do that to your geode. But I do have one. I have one I did the other day that still has some of the salt on it. So I'll just show you. I'm just gonna take my hand and you can see the salt coming off. I'm just gonna brush it like this, and I, I would normally do this over a garbage can, which I would recommend, but since I'm trying to show it on the video, <laughs> you can see I'm just gently rubbing my finger over the top, and then I'll, sh I'll brush this into the garbage can, but I got a lot of that nice, crystally look on that one as well. So I hope you had I hope you had a good time uh, painting your geode, and when you're done, just make sure to clean your brushes and clean your cups and put all the supplies away. Thanks a lot.